Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll again discuss about Blast, BAM and Blossom. So we talked about E-values and bit scores. So we'll continue from there on. So let's get started with this. So we'll talk about in this video that how E-values are expressed. So starting off with that, so there are a number of terms and conditions on which E-values are based. So E-values is expressed in scientific notations as you can see example as 4e minus 93 so these are something that is kept up or that is something to the power of that so these are how e values are expressed so this is a very small e value this one which means the likelihood that it's a significant match is high an e value of 0 also means that the likelihood of significant match is high all right so lower the e value higher the significance all right an e value of 1 means that there is an equal chance that the alignment is meaningful or random all right so e value of 1 is not so much reliable as compared to 0 and e value of 10 means that 10 alignments with scores equal to or better than the alignment scores are expected to be found by chance so e value 10 is not at all a reliable one all right now basically which means that 10 alignments with scores equal to or better than uh, the alignment scores are expected to found to be found by chance so you can think of that as a 10 to 1 ratio or chance that can that the particular element you are looking is at random and not significant so there are so e value of 10 means so there are 10 probabilities that we can get a better score than this all right so in general matches with e values less than 1 or even less than 0.1 are more likely to be significant all right so lower the value better higher the significance simple as that so moving on with that so why alter blast parameters so this is a very important question that i want to answer and most of uh, the bioinformatics students uh, say it so why we need to alter blast parameters so well, let's expect the uh, expect the e, expect the larger e value the more distantly related sequences will be returned so x so larger e value means more non-significant or unreliable sequence so however an e-value of 1 roughly represents a 50-50 a value of 1 is pretty much unreliable then not higher than that all right so it basically represents a 50-50 chance of all set and a proportion of all set increases with e all right so lower your e-value cut off to eliminate less significant matches so basically lower my e value so lesser is the chance i'll basically cut off or eliminate less significant matches so there will be very less matches or better matches than what i have right now so let's say my e value is 0 0.1 so so to get a e value of 0 there are very limited significant matches between the two numbers to get to 0 from 0 0.1 all right also if my e value is 10 so there are a lot number of significant values or significant matches in particular all right significant matches to reach zero all right so there are there are there is a higher probability to reach from 10 to zero whereas from 0 0.1 to zero all right so basically it eliminates the less significant matches so if you are searching for very short matches or higher e value cutoff must be used all right so also remove low complexity sequences especially in nucleotide database sequence repeats are masked all right so remove low complexity low complexity sequences so we use we need to alter blast sequences to remove low complexity sequences especially in nucleotide databases with sequence repeats where sequence repeats are masked also a word size talk about now the word size which are a word size is the length of the initial exact match all right so word length is the length of the initial exact match required to initiate evaluation of a region as possible as hsp also the default is 3 amino acid use a higher value for nucleic acid a lower value if searching for short sequence matches well just uh, in short the word size is the length of initial exact matches all right so this is the size or the length of the initial exact matches so let's say 
required to initiate evaluation of a region as possible as HSP. All right, this is a high segment proportion. All right, so the default is three amino acids. So the length is three of an initial exact match to initiate evaluation. All right, so usually uh, use a higher value for nucleic acid, a lower value if searching for a short sequence matches. Obviously, if you have a short sequence, so use a very small word size for evaluating or the length of the, the, the word size should be very small for the exact matches so that you can evaluate with the exact matches. All right. So let's say there for the for the amino acid shown that it's basically sometimes the default value is three and for amino uh, nucleotides is higher. All right. So these were some of the terms. So moving on with the So there are some more of them. So such as blast mode choose depending on the identity of your query all right so we need to choose here yeah, there are a number of blast modes such as xp that i have uh, mentioned in my previous video so we need to choose depending on the identity of my query and what you are looking for all right also nucleotide nucleotide comparison to see if your protein is represented in the database uh, protein protein to find homologous relative so this is very important that nucleotide nucleotide comparison to see if your protein is represented in the database uh, depending on the blast mode and also protein protein to find homologous relatives all right so next part is databases which are the databases are you looking for everything in the database so only a subset such as sequences with known structure uh, are you looking for everything in the database so only a subset such as sequences with known structure so this is very important uh, to understand that uh, that is why we need to alter BLAST parameters for databases or are you looking everything in the database or only a particular thing in a database. All right. So accordingly, we need to alter BLAST parameters. Also genetic code. So some organisms use a genetic code that varies from the standard. All right. So if you're doing translated BLAST calculation, the translation you can uh, use can affect scores all right so this is some of the genetic codes and like particular uh, related things with blast parameters so you can just remember uh, points as a blast mode on the identity on the depending on the nature of your sequence and what you're looking for also the databases if you're looking for the entire thing in the database or a particular thing in the database also genetic code so some organism uses genetic code that varies from the standard and also gap costs so it makes it harder or harder or easier to introduce gaps in alignment so depending on the query to query so so there are moving from so these are some of the special cases so you can just read on with this so i'll be teaching all of them blossom 62 pam 30 and everything so you can just give it a read all of the word sizes are there e values are there gap costs are there elements uh, alignments are there scoring matrix filters everything is there so you can just give it a read by pausing the video uh, thus moving on with this so talking about substitution matrices so it is used to score aligned positions usually of amino acids and not of nucleotides also it is expressed as the log likelihood ratio of mutations or log odds ratio all right and derived from multiple sequence alignment so this is basic this is msa right from msa and there are two commonly used matrix under substitution matrix so this is the point we will where we'll talk about pam and blossom all right so talking about pam so pam is what it's the percent accepted mutation all right which was given by day of and blossom is what so blossom is block substitution matrix which was given by hanikoff all right so talking about pam which was given by m day of 1978 also talking about this so since the evolutionary time is measured in percent accepted mutation or pams all right so one pam of evolution means so pam one means one percent of the residue or pieces have changed uh, over the over all of the 20 amino acids such as say like pam 35 what the what does pam 35 means so it basically means that 35 percent of the residues or pieces have changed averaged over all 20 amino acids so this is what pam talks about it's basically to get the relative frequency of each type of mutation all right so he basically gets the relative frequency of each type of mutation we count the time we count the number of times it was observed in a database 
or multiple sequence alignment. All right. So basically, count the relative frequency of each type of mutation and each type of mutation, how many times it has occurred in a particular database or multiple sequence alignment. All right. So this is PAM that we are talking about, and it is based on global alignment. This is very important, and it assumes a Markov model for evolution. All right. So this was for PAM. Talking about Blossom. All right. So this was given by Hennigoff and Hennigoff in 1992. So it is based on the database of uncapped local alignments. So this is based on local alignments, whereas the PAM was based on global alignments. All right. So alignments have lower similarities than PAM alignments. All right. Definitely, it will have low similarities because uh, it uses local alignments. Uh, and also, so you get to know from this point as well. So Blossom number indicates that the percent identity level. Of sequences in the alignment. So, such as here is an example for you. So this is Blossom 62 sequences. Explain that it has approximately 62% identity were counted. So, such as we found, uh, if we are given an exam to find that uh, or to state that how what does Blossom 100 indicate? So, it indicates that approximately 100% identity were counted. All right. So, it basically the identity percentage that it provides. All right. Overall, it provides the overall identity percentage. All right, and some blocks represents function units providing validations of the alignments. All right, so moving on, so we have the multiple sequence alignment. As you can see, are like uh, complicated all of the sequence present, number of queries present here, and uh, many number of uh, base pairs there. All right, so we'll talk about this in my next video. So stay tuned till then. Thank you for watching this video.